Science Journal for Kids and Teens presents How Can Polar Bears Survive Longer in a Changing Climate? Adapted from the original peer-reviewed paper in the journal Science, published on June 16, 2022. Research conducted by Kristen L. Lydra, Beth Shapiro, and others from the Polar Science Center at the University of Washington and the Department of Ecology and Evolutionary Biology at the University of California, Santa Cruz, respectively. See the full list of authors and their affiliations in the accompanying PDF. Read by Miranda Wilson. Abstract. Polar bears are decreasing in number because of climate change. Polar bears depend on Arctic sea ice to hunt for their food. In a warming climate, sea ice is disappearing. Because of this, many polar bears around the Arctic are expected to disappear. Are there any places in the Arctic where polar bears might have a chance to survive when the sea ice disappears? What would those habitats look like? Would the polar bears that live there look or act differently? We have found a group of polar bears in southeast Greenland that live in fjords. They use ice from glaciers as well as sea ice to hunt. We conducted a study looking at their movement, genetics, and demography. We found that Southeast Greenland polar bears don't travel much because of the rugged environment. They have been isolated from other polar bears for about 200 years and are a genetically distinct group. Future studies of these polar bears will help with conservation efforts for the species. Introduction the climate is warming all over the world, but did you know that the Arctic is changing faster than many other places? Species that depend on cold temperatures are suffering. They could even face extinction. Polar bears are one of these species. They are top predators and keystone species in the Arctic. This means they have a large impact on other species. Indigenous communities also rely on polar bears for food, and to support the economy. Polar bears use sea ice to hunt for food. As the Arctic warms, there will be less sea ice for them to use. This could impact the entire community. Polar bear subpopulations are found throughout the Arctic. There are currently 19 in total. We have studied polar bears in East Greenland for 36 years. During our studies, we noticed that some bears spend time in southeast Greenland. Many fjords there have glaciers behind them. Ice from glaciers could provide platforms for polar bears to hunt during the periods of the year when sea ice isn't available. This area could be climate refugia for polar bears, which would help them survive as the Arctic warms. We wanted to examine polar bears in Southeast Greenland in more detail. So we initiated a multi-year study to look at polar bear movement, genetics, and demography. Our goal was to assess whether these polar bears were another subpopulation. We also wanted to learn how to best protect them from a changing climate. Polar bears are top predators in the Arctic. They hunt their favorite food, seals, from sea ice. In southeast Greenland, polar bears also hunt from floating glacier ice. The top photo shows an iceberg in the foreground and snow-capped mountains in the background. The bottom photo shows two polar bears using floating ice. Methods at the beginning of our study, we talked with indigenous communities. We used their knowledge to locate and sample polar bears in southeast Greenland. We used helicopters to locate and then humanely immobilize polar bears. We put satellite radio collars on individual bears and took tissue samples. We also assessed their age and reproductive status. We combined these data with data we had already collected from Northeast and Southeast Greenland polar bears. We used data from the satellite radio collars to see where the polar bears went. Then we estimated how far they traveled over four day periods. We extracted DNA from the tissue samples we collected. 
We analyze their genotypes at 20 locations in the DNA. Then, we use computer models to help us look at the genomes of our polar bears. We compared them to polar bears found elsewhere. We also used genomic data to help us recreate the evolutionary history of our polar bears. Results. Movement. We noticed that polar bears from southeast Greenland generally did not travel far or cross the 64 degrees north latitude line. This was a clear divide between southeast and northeast polar bears. We saw that polar bears in southeast Greenland moved about 10 kilometers every four days. They stayed in local fjords throughout the year. We also saw them sometimes using ice from glaciers as hunting platforms. In contrast, we saw that bears in northeast Greenland moved about 40 kilometers every four days. They roamed more than 1,500 kilometers each year and stayed on the sea ice. Here in figure one, you can see polar bear movement in East Greenland from satellite radio collar data. You can see data from Northeast Greenland polar bears in blue and data from Southeast Greenland polar bears in red. Populations are separated at 64 degrees north latitude, which is shown by a dashed line. Looking at the figure, how can you compare the difference in the two polar bear populations movement? Genetics. We found that the southeastern group of polar bears is very genetically isolated. They are distinct from the other 19 subpopulations of polar bears in the Arctic. We also found that the southeast Greenland polar bears have been isolated for at least 200 years. Demography. We documented that birth rates are low in southeast Greenland polar bears. This means there are fewer cubs in Southeast Greenland and adult females have a lower chance of being pregnant. This could be because mates are hard to find in the rugged landscape. All of these data together show that the Southeast Greenland group of polar bears is a subpopulation, the 20th in the world. Discussion. Southeast Greenland polar bears are genetically isolated and therefore a distinct subpopulation. They stay near glacial fjords. Rugged terrain limits the movements of these polar bears. Over time, this has caused the subpopulation to become genetically unique. It is important to maintain genetic diversity in polar bear subpopulations. Genetic diversity helps species be more resistant to climate change. As the world warms, the amount and extent of Arctic sea ice will continue to decrease. So, polar bears will probably disappear from many places. Polar bears in southeast Greenland use ice from glaciers to hunt during the periods of time when there is no sea ice. Polar bears that use this strategy might survive climate change longer than others. But glaciers in Greenland are also melting, so we do not know how long they will last. We can find ways to protect these polar bears through local management. We also hope to learn more about Southeast Greenland polar bears through long-term studies. Conclusion. Climate change is altering the environment. Organisms that depend on those environments are at risk. Knowledge about climate refugia could help conservation efforts for these species. How can you support polar bears? The best way is to reduce your contribution to climate change. You can take public transportation, recycle materials, and reduce your energy use. You could even write your government representatives and ask them to increase green energy use in your area. Thank you for listening to this recording. Visit our website, sciencejournalforkids.org, for more free science teaching resources.